Hello and welcome to Anthem Church, everybody. Thank you so much for gathering with us today. My name is Paul. I'm the vision and teaching pastor at Anthem Church. And Anthem is a word that means a song of praise and devotion. And we want our lives to be a song of praise and devotion. So we gather together uh, to uh, learn together, to serve together, and to live together in community so that we may live as Jesus lives and love as Jesus loves. So thank you so much for gathering with us today. Uh, we'd love for you to connect with us here at Anthem. We'd love to know that you're here. Our elders and prayer team pray for everybody who's here. So if you would let us know just by connecting with us, you could text us um, on our church phone number whenever you're watching this, whether it's uh, at 1015 on a Sunday morning or if it's 530 on a Saturday night, whenever you're watching this with us, um, just text us and let us know that you're here so we can pray with you. Uh, also, uh, we'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, anytime that we have a worship gathering on Sunday, uh, you'll get the video just straight to your inbox. But also, when we have different videos, like this week, I'll be setting up a video where I'll be talking about some of the signposts that God's been uh, giving us here at Anthem and the vision He's been leading us towards. And now just go right to your uh, inbox. So we'd love for you to, to subscribe as well. Hold on one second. I've got a cough. <coughs> I'm nowhere near anybody, so I'm just going to cough. Now I'm back, church. All right, hold on. Okay, Anthem Kids. Give me a second. Man, I was trying to hold off on that cough for so long, I thought I could get it out. Okay, Anthem Kids, thank you guys so much for hanging with us, guys. Uh, we, love to, we love that you're here and with us, and we have a Anthem Kids classroom that's all set up for you. Uh, so parents, aunts, uncles, friends, if you would like to um, take part in our Anthem Kids, and uh, we'd love to send you a code. You can text us at our church phone number, and Miss Jenny on our kids team will send you a code for you to have access to our kids classroom. There is a guided prayer thing. There'll be a craft idea. There'll be a video maybe to watch as well, and Miss Jenny will, will uh, help you through that. Uh, Serve Local is this Wednesday, and it is actually for those of us in Portland. So if you're in Anthem, Portland area, uh, it'll be this Wednesday night about 6. If you're interested, text the church phone number and let us know. We're going to set you up. Christine will talk with you. We're going to be making sandwiches and lunches for our brothers and sisters uh, in need in the Portland area. So that is this Wednesday night um, at about 6 or so. So text us and let us know if you're able uh, to gather with us. All right, that we got. That is what we got. So let us uh, transition uh, into our worship gathering. We're going to uh, start with some scripture to guide, uh, set our hearts and our minds uh, in a clear place. Then we're going to uh, thank God through a blessing video. We'll sing a little bit. Uh, we will uh, pray together. So have your phones ready so we can pray uh, virtually together. Uh, if you call Anthem Home, then we'll receive our offering then, and then we'll have communion, some more music, and some teaching. So as we do that, go ahead and uh, close your eyes, would you? Holy Jesus, we ask that you would help us to focus, uh, to clear our shoulders, to clear our minds of that which would distract us from what you would have for us right now. Would we take the next little bit of time and devote it and focus it towards you so we may be shaped and changed by who you are, so we may live as you live and love as you love. Amen. Hi, my name is Nikki Riggs, and I will be reading this week's Bible verse. News of all this reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he urged them all to stay firmly loyal to the Lord from the bottom of their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a substantial crowd was added to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. They were, they were there a whole year and were received hospitably in the church and taught a substantial crowd. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians.
good, you are good when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. Uh, we sing in as a uh, tribe together 
and we pray as a tribe together. Uh, so whether we are across cities and counties and states, uh, we still uh, pray together. So we'd ask if you would uh, pray with us right now as a tribe and get your phone out and text us any prayers or prayer requests you may have so we may pray as a community. One of the blessings that we have as Jesus followers is that we get to worship him with our whole lives, and that includes worshiping him with our finances. And so if you love Jesus and you call Anthem home, this is the time where we receive our offering. You can give uh, just by texting uh, GIVE to 971-272-8500, or you can visit us uh, at our website, anthemtribe.org, and give as well. If you would please uh, join me in our prayer for our offering. Holy Jesus, thank you so much uh, for finances. Thank you for our provisions. And thank you that we can uh, worship you as Lord through them. May we declare that you are lo Lord over our life, that our peace and our rest is found in you. Would you receive this offering as worship? And would you use it to expand your kingdom here and now? Amen. Amen. Uh, as uh, followers of Jesus, he says, when we gather, that we do this in remembrance of him, and doing so, we, we receive communion. That, uh, this is his body uh, that was uh, broken, and this is the blood that was shed as a ransom for many. And that Jesus is present when we take communion, uh, though we don't know how that works. But in this, we get to taste and see how Jesus has come to make all things new. I just come to take this upside down world and flip it right side up. So would you receive communion with me? Holy God, we ask for, for, for forgiveness of those things we've done and those things that we've left undone. And as children of Jesus, we receive that forgiveness from you today. Amen. Friends and sisters, please take and eat and continue to worship through song.
you're with me and I will not fear you comfort me I will not fear you're with me I will not fear you comfort me I will not fear you're with me you for bringing us together in your name and to praise you thank you for being there thank you for not leaving us in want thank you for comforting us <sighs> lord arise in us each day and be with us as we go forward be with us in our struggles and in our comfort and in our joy <sighs> and in your precious name amen Amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Nia. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Rick. Tribe, thank you all. Let's uh, transition to some teaching time right now. Uh, whew, I love that. I love uh, just that call out. God, to uh, like, uh, arise, O oh Lord. Don't forget I'm helpless. Like, I love that, that cry out to God. It speaks so, to so many areas. Uh, but uh, uh, thank you all. Uh, so, whoa, my voice... I turned 13 right there real quick. That was weird. Ah, all right. Ah, 
Hello, everybody. Welcome to Anthem Church. Now, welcome, everybody. Thanks for gathering with us today. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm the vision and teaching pastor here at Anthem, and we have been uh, started a new series here uh, called Into the Unknown. And so if you got your Bibles or your Bible apps, uh, we're going to be in the book of Acts today. We'll also throw them up there on the screen uh, if you don't have them ready for you. Uh, but this series, Into the Unknown, uh, is one that I'm ex incredibly excited about. Uh, so let's, uh, let's pray and let's dive right in. <sighs> Holy Jesus, thank you so much for all that you are doing in and through Anthem. God, this week I, I uh, was just shown more and more about how it is your power, it is your love, it is your movement that is, that, that is doing things through these communities. Uh, it is not of who we are, but it is of who you are. So God, thank you for that, and we ask Jesus that you would continue to do that today, that it would be your words and not mine. May my words fall flat at my feet, but Jesus, would it be your words that would, um, that, that, that would be spoken, that it would be written on the walls of our hearts that we leave, not just with intellectual knowledge, but be shaped and changed, to live as you live and love as you love. Would the words of Jesus Christ be on our minds, on our lips, and on our hearts. Amen. A Men, uh, we have been in this series called Into the Unknown uh, because uh, we're starting a new phase of life uh, for most of us, uh, for a lot of us. Um, we've been, uh, you know, many of us in this month or last month uh, either have uh, children who are starting school, and so they're starting online school for the first time or the second time, and both parents are home or one parent is home, and, or we're trying to figure out how to help uh, school our kids, right, or grandparents and uncles and aunts uh, or in a new time where they're not being able to see uh, their, their grandkids or their nieces and nephews or family as much as possible. You have adults who are going into school uh, for the first time, or it's been a, a long time since they've been in school, and so they're transitioning that, and, it looks, and it's online school. We have college seniors that are finishing their year online. Uh, job transitions, people have locked, like, we've been in the middle of this unknown, not just because it started here in September, not just because it started, because it started here in March, but five years ago, when you were asked for your five-year plan, you didn't have the pandemic uh, in your mind, all right? You didn't have the, uh, uh, the, the, the global situation that we have right now. So we've been in the middle of the pandemic. We've been in the middle of the unknown. And luckily for us, uh, there, uh, we, we don't walk through the unknown by our, uh, in the unknown by ourselves. But Jesus says uh, that uh, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, like we fear no evil. Why? Because he is with us. So we are in this place unknown, and luckily for us as well, followers of Jesus have dealt with being in the unknown in all sorts of different contexts for 2,000 plus years as the church. And so we look at the, the book of Acts. Um, Acts chapter 11 gives us this picture of this church in Antioch. It's just this little, little hub of Christ in Antioch. And Acts chapter 11 verse 22 says this, News of all this reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he urged them all to stay firmly loyal to the Lord from the bottom of their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and substantial crowds were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. They were there a whole year, and they received hospitality in the church and taught a substantial crowd. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians, or, or little Christs is another term for that. This church in Antioch is this little hub of Christ. It's this little zone of healing. And so we see in the middle, though this church was born out of pain, this church was born out of oppression, this church was born out of murder. Um, we see them uh, begin to form this community that is this, this uh, uh, zone of healing, right? This little place uh, of, uh, of, of, of heaven here on earth. How did they get there in Acts chapter 11? How did Antioch get there? We're going to be talking about that. To do so, let's go to Acts chapter 1. So we're going to start. Now, Acts is the sequel. Uh, there was back in the day, there was this guy named Theophilus, and he was a wealthy Roman Christian that we think. We think. And, um, and he wanted to know uh, that what he uh, believed in Jesus was actually historically true. The reason why is because what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Like today, you should know, you should want to know, you should be curious. It, did Jesus, is he historically God? Did he, was he historically dead? Was he historically raised from the dead? All those matter. They matter as much today as it mattered at Theophilus back in the day. 
Because for Theophilus, he was like, listen, if I'm going to believe this, if I'm going to make him Lord and devote my life to following him and the ways that he says for me to live, I need to know that it actually is true. And so Luke uh, is this doctor who becomes a a follower of Jesus and then a a church planter, like an associate pastor, assistant pastor type guy. And so Luke goes and he writes um, uh, the Gospel of Luke, the, the Rocky uh, you know, of, uh, of, of Jesus there, and, and this, this historiography there. And then we get Acts, which is like Rocky II. Uh, we get the sequel here. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, we see this. Luke even starts off addressing it to Theophilus. And he says, Dear Theophilus, the previous book which I wrote, I had to, which I wrote had to do with everything Jesus began to do and teach. I took the story as far as the day when he was taken up, once he had given the instructions through the Holy Spirit to his chosen apostles. He showed himself to them alive and after suffering by many proofs. He was seen by them for 40 days during which he spoke about God's kingdom. As they were having a meal together, he, put them, he told them not to go away from Jerusalem, but to wait, as he put it, for the Father's promise, which I was telling you about earlier. John baptized you with water, you see. But in a few days from now, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles came together, they put this question to Jesus. Master, they said, is this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? All right, a lot of things happening there. First off, one, Luke is starting off telling us, listen, everything that we started off in Luke talking about Jesus, that is just beginning to talk about what Jesus began to do and teach. I love that. See, Jesus just didn't finish what he began to do and teach when he died. It didn't finish when he was resurrected. It didn't finish when he was ascended into heaven. No, for the next 2,000 plus years, to whenever he comes home, the followers of Jesus are continuing the books of Acts. We are continuing to tell the story of what Jesus continues to do and teach. So I love the way that Luke puts that to Theophilus. And so he says, hey, listen, Jesus was risen from the dead. Uh, and then he hung out for like 40 days with his disciples there, the, not just the 12, but followers of his. And he, he showed them uh, uh, in the scriptures, right? He taught them what it looked like to follow him. He was with them in this new transfigured body. Whatever this transformed, transfigured body looked like, that's what Jesus uh, was, was with them in. And so he's hanging out with them. He's reminding them time and time again, just so you know, remember, I'm peacing out, uh, but I promise you the Holy Spirit's gonna come. You're gonna be all good. And then we get this in uh, verse 6. It says, um, Master, is this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, what are they talking about? Uh, They're talking about uh, Jewish eschatology, a Jewish understanding of the end times. How are things finally going to come to, to, to be the way they're supposed to be? From a Jewish perspective, we get two ages back in the first century. You get the present age, uh, which is characterized by uh, sin, death, destruction, uh, disease, uh, awfulness. That's the present age. And then there will be the age to come. And the age to come uh, will be when everything is the way it's supposed to be. Everything will be beautiful. Now what separates that is the day of the Messiah. If you look at this in the Hebrew scriptures in the Tanakh, they often refer to it as the day of the Lord, or on that day, or on that great day, or on the day of the Lord. That's what they're referring to. They're referring to the Messiah coming. Now, when the Messiah comes, the idea is that he is going to lead an army. He's going to raise them up either as a warrior king, a priest, or a warrior king and a priest. And he's going to raise them up as an army, and then they're going to go start killing uh, everybody else who isn't Jewish and oppressing them, all their enemies. They're going to slaughter all their enemies, and then Israel is going to rule um, kind of over the earth uh, as a... Uh, um, um, as a, what do they call that? As a benevolent dictator. And the Messiah is going to be kind of the king that rules as this conduit between God. That's what they thought was going to happen. And then once the, the day of the Lord came and they killed all their enemies, and the Messiah was king over everything, and God was king over, over everything through the Messiah, uh, then it, there was all sorts of different understandings as to like who would be resurrected or whatnot. Now think about this. You're Jesus. You have spent three years hanging out with these peeps and teaching them time and time again. Hey, the kingdom of God, it looks like loving your enemy and praying for those who persecute you. And uh, time and time again, they, they keep asking you, great, we love that part. When do we get to kill our enemies? All right, now you have died, you have resurrected. You are now transfigured Jesus. You've been hanging out with them for 40 days. You've been going in and out of walls and they, you're ready to leave. And they say, ah, 
is now when we get to kill all the Romans, is now when we get to get stabby stabby on everybody. I mean, if I'm Jesus, I am nothing but Picard meme after, after Picard meme, right? I am nothing but just slapping my face and going, how could you possibly still be thinking this? How could you possibly still have this in your mind that, that I'm going to lead you to then slaughter all my children who are made in my image? <sighs> Luckily for us, I'm not Jesus. And Jesus is much more Jesus than I am. So Jesus doesn't uh, go Picard meme on them. Instead, he says this, It's not your business to know about times and dates, he replied. The Father has placed all that is under his own direct authority. What will happen, though, is that you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. As Jesus said this, he was lifted up while they were watching. A cloud took him out of their sight. They were gazing into heaven as he disappeared. Then lo and behold, two men dressed in white standing beside them. Galileans, they said. Why are you standing here staring into heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. I love that. that uh, so th- this is a crazy scene. This is a banana scene, okay? We need to recognize as Jesus followers, like we understand some really, really difficult stuff and go, I don't know what, what this looked like. Jesus ascends into heaven. Listen, heaven isn't in the sky. Heaven is is interdimensional, right? Heaven's in some other dimension. I don't know what heaven looks like. I don't know what that looks like for Jesus to go there. It says here that he ascends up into like a cloud, but he tells them before, hey, get to Jerusalem uh, and just wait. And uh, they get the, he ascends into heaven and the disciples are still staring there and you've got two angels that come out and they're like looking at the disciples and going, at some point, are you gonna follow Jesus? Are you just gonna do anything he said at any point? Uh, he told you guys to go, you know? So you have Jesus sends into heaven. Now, there's all sorts of details in there. There's all sorts of stuff that I want to spend um, week after week into in these 11 verses alone. But we don't have all that. I want to just focus on one area. And it's back there in verse 8. And the last thing that Jesus says to his followers, he says, what will happen, though, is that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the earth. Jesus does this really fun thing. It's, he gives us a little uh, spoonful of sugar to make the medicine goes down. He goes like, hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. You're going to get power. And by the way, you're going to be my witnesses uh, to uh, Judea and Jerusalem, Samaria and the ends of the earth. Uh, and, then he, and then he leaves. And that be my witnesses is a huge thing. That's the charge of the church. That's what it looks like. When people talk about like, what does it mean uh, to be a follower of Jesus? Like, what, 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 what is the purpose? Uh, what does life look like, purpose and design? Like, this idea, what Jesus says, to be my witnesses, that's what he's talking about. But for many of us in the church, when we hear be my witnesses, man, it messes us all up. Like, some of us uh, are over here, and we think, uh, we hear be my witnesses, and we've and maybe been raised in the church, and, and, and be my witnesses looks like um, uh, getting up on stage in front of everybody and, and having to tell like the worst part of uh, the worst sin I'd ever done and how Jesus like forgave me from that. And that's really personal and really hard. And I don't really know if I want to share all that with everybody or have any way to really share that, right? Or, 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 or to I know what to say. Or there's those of us in the church that, that have just kind of like, listen, I don't have this horrible story necessarily that I think where I, I hit rock bottom. Like I was never, you know, in a sewer, like chasing meth down a drain just so I, sh- I could get some. And then Jesus came, like, I don't have that story. Like, uh, I don't know how to share my, what do you mean to be my witnesses? And then others uh, of us have kind of taken that and twisted it a little bit. See, Peter is a, uh, a pastor in the first century. He's a, uh, and, he, and he writes this uh, letter uh, to, to his churches, and he says, uh, uh, always be ready to have a, a, an answer for the, for the way that you live. Always be ready with an answer for the way that you live. And some of us have taken that verse to be like, oh yeah, I've always, to be my witnesses means that I need to have an answer for every gotcha question in the Bible. You know, and I'm just not that person. I haven't gone to school long enough or pray enough or, or worship enough or go to church enough. I don't give enough. I don't do any of that stuff enough. I certainly don't know how to, how to uh, uh, answer, you know, questions that people have about what about this contradiction. So, so I, I, I don't know what to do. So we just don't do it. That's not what be my witnesses means at all. Like none of those things are kind of be my witnesses. Some of those, being my witness could be some of those things. But what does it mean to be a witness? What does it mean to be a witness? 
What have you seen and what have you heard? What have you seen? What, tell me what happened. What does it mean to be a witness? Just tell me what happened. What's happened? Uh, there's a guy that Jesus heals, and they're like, tell us what happened. He's like, I was blind, and now I see. They're like, oh, well, how did he do it? And he couldn't have done that. He's like, listen, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have the theological answers. I don't know how he did it. I don't, under, he, I, I don't think that he's God. I don't understand that. All I can tell you is this. I was blind, but now I see. Be my witnesses. It just looks like, uh, um, what, what have you seen? What have you heard? It's an easy thing. But if it's so easy, then why do we get so tripped up by it? And only that, if it's so easy, then why does Jesus say before that? Why does he give us the, the sugar? Why does he say, hey, don't worry about it? Don't worry. The power of God is going to come upon you. Well, if I need the power of God, what mission are you possibly going to give me? Like, it's like, hey, don't worry. Um, uh, the Mission Impossible team is going to come with you. I, I just need you to do this task. Why do I need Tom Cruise coming down from a ceiling like, to, for me to, to go and do this task? Why, why do I need the power of God if, if the mission is to be my witnesses and it's just, you know, be my witnesses and, and uh, uh, what you have seen and what you have heard? Because the mission is immense. That's why. The mission is huge. The mission is, is impossible, improbable. The mission to, to be my witnesses where? In Jerusalem? Jerusalem? They just killed you there like a month ago, Jesus. They just killed you there. You want us to go to Judea? We've been there. They rejected you. They heard your sales pitch. You know what they said? They weren't interested. They had other things in mind. Samaria? We hate them. We hate them. They deserve everything they get for everything they've done. They deserve all of that. You want us to be your witnesses there? And then to the ends of the earth, the Gentile dogs? Listen up, Jesus. I got a Bible here. And let me show you in Scripture where it says that they can't even enter into the kingdom of heaven. The mission is immense. Be my witnesses. How is that possible? So, so if it's so easy to just, uh, to just say what I, I've seen and, and, and what I've heard, uh, then why do I need the power of God? And how was that even done? How do I, well, what is a Jerusalem in my life? Oh, the people that, that really don't like me. No problem. I've got a long list of those. I got to start telling them about Jesus. I mean, what is that? How does that even happen? It can be so confusing. And luckily for us, we have this, this picture and acts of this church in the middle of the unknown that just lives out what it looks like to be my witnesses. In Acts chapter 11, there are these people here uh, that, that were Jewish Christians, and, uh, and they lived in Jerusalem, and then there was some state-sponsored uh, religious violence that murdered one of their pastors, and so they had to flee, and they fled to an area into a culture that they didn't know uh, with people that, that they had been raised to believe uh, uh, weren't able to enter into the kingdom of heaven and, uh, and that didn't like them. And in Acts chapter 11, we see this in verse 19. The people have been scattered because of their persecution that came from Stephen and went as far afield as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, speaking the word only to Jewish people. But some from among them who were from Cyprus and Cyrene in the first place arrived in Antioch and spoke to the Hellenists or spoke to the Gentiles, spoke to the non-Jewish people as well, announcing the good news to the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them and a large number of people believed and turned to them. In fact, they were such a... a a place of, of healing. They were such a zone of healing. They were such an outpost of the kingdom of God that Barnabas, who's this pastor, says, I've got a person for you. And he runs off and he finds Saul, who's this new convert to Christianity. He's this new follower to Jesus. Saul just happens to be the person that had oversaw the execution of the Christian pastor that sent these people scattered to Antioch. There is something so much in their witness, so much in how they lived their life that he went, I've got it. Dude, I know the place. Nobody, nobody's going to bring Saul in, but these people will. These people are just going to love and accept him. And so he goes and he brings Saul in, and Saul lives there with their hospitality uh, for well over a year. This is where they're first called, little Christ. This is what it means. This is how we are to be my witnesses. What does it look like in the unknown? Well, in the unknown, Antioch, uh, the church of Antioch went, um, uh, went and, and, and started to gather here. So what does it mean? We go there. Go to the next one, Ray. What does it mean uh, for us to be this, this mission of Jesus? What does this mean for us to, uh, to live uh, as witnesses 
uh, and need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. The first thing we need to recognize is that the mission of the movement is just to live as Jesus lives and love as Jesus loves. To witness uh, what you have seen and what you have heard. That we just, we li- what it means to be my witness is I've got to live as Jesus lived and love as he loves. And I love that so much because it seems so impossible and it's so improbable. And the only way for you to do it is through the power of God. And yet we see it here in the church of Antioch. Not only that, but we, we see the church of Antioch get, get thrown into utter confusion uh, in utter uh, uh, turmoil. And they gather together, and all, the, all, they, all they know what to do is just to, to gather together and love on one another and love on people. They become this, this zone of healing. I was reminded about this uh, this week. Earlier this week, I uh, got a message uh, from one of our... Uh, but one of the first people uh, that, uh, that found an anthem with us, and they were going through some old emails, kind of cleaning out their inbox, you know, where you have like 3,000 emails or whatever. So they were going through some old emails, and he ran through some of the, the emails of, when, uh, of our conversations of, of when, we, uh, when anthem first started uh, getting spoken about or whispered about in hushed corners of restaurants. And, and he said, man, it's so hard to, to look back at these emails because there was so much hurt and so much pain and so, and so, and so much of this, and yet... I can look now five years later and be so thankful for what God has done through Anthem. So many people have, have said yes to Jesus or have found acceptance and love through this place. It's like, it's just amazing. He's like, we didn't have any business. He, he told, he's like, we didn't have any business do, doing what we were doing. And I laughed and I was like, I know, man. We just like came together and we're like, we're just gonna mess stuff up by, by loving people. That's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna love people and mess stuff up. And, and that's what happened. So it's beautiful to see uh, uh, this week, somebody was able to look back and go, man, I, man, this was all hard, and this was all bad, and I did not know any way of how this was going to come out, but Jesus brought so much good out of this. Then the mission of the movement is just to, is to do that, is to, to live that out. The mission of the movement is also not about self-preservation, because for us to be witnesses, it means that we need to uh, give ourselves over to Jesus, and then he becomes the one who, who tells us what to do or tells us how to live, which means that he tells us to do things that we're not comfortable with or, or, uh, or we have to share things that, that we, we, we don't know what to do with or stretches us in all these places, not because it's about us, but because it's about what he is and what he wants. And what he wants is for everyone to be loved and accepted and welcomed in, into his love and his peace and his acceptance and his reconciliation. And so we die to ourselves, just like the church. Because when the church is told to go to Jerusalem, man, Jesus, we don't like any of those people. I know it ain't about you, and it ain't about your feelings about them. It's about my feelings towards them, and I love them. And so follow me, and I will shape your heart to love them as well. What about Judea? Same thing. What about uh, uh, Samaria? Same thing. What about the Gentiles? The same thing. And as we do so, we, we get to become these little hubs, these little zones of healings, these little zone of healing and acceptance. I, I, uh, I thought about this week with this about not being self-preservation because we live in a culture here where you don't talk about politics or religion. Why? So that you don't get stabbed, right? So that you don't lose friendships, so that we don't ever uh, get fired, so we don't hurt anybody, right? It's not about self-preservation. So, but when Jesus says that we are to live our lives no matter what our work is or no matter what our lives or our friendships are, that we need to be witnesses to him. And so in the early church, there's this guy named Tertullian uh, who was a pastor in Carthage in North Africa. And he talks about how the early church uh, uh, came to be in this area. And one of the things that he says was that, well, the, the church came just from, well, there, there, were, there were cobblers here and there were bakers here and there were farmers here and there were people here. And what, what he's describing is that people were just living their lives and they were just being witnesses to Jesus. And they were just being witnesses of loving people as Jesus would love or live as people lives, and that's how the churches came together. It's like this week when I get a conversation from somebody uh, at, uh, at Anthem, and uh, they, uh, they, 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 they text, and we talk about how uh, they, they did the, uh, uh, the, the blessing from last week where we had to go and, and you know, um, uh, be, uh, 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 be an area of truth or, or be an area of, of mission of God's love for somebody, they opened themselves up to somebody and got to share about not only about uh, how they were a follower of Jesus, but where they had blown it at. You know, this humility and this vulnerability thing where they not only shared in humility and vulnerability, but they, they were able to be a picture of Jesus in that. And it was so amazing and so beautiful to see. 
It wasn't about their self-preservation. Because self-preservation means I don't talk about where I messed up or where I blew up at. Especially as a Christian, because man, if I, if I talk about how I, how I did something wrong as a Christian, like that's even worse, right? There's so much shame and so much guilt, and they're going to know that I'm a fraud. They're going to know uh, the imposter syndrome that I feel myself. But they fought all through that, through the power of the Holy Spirit. They're able to share in humility and vulnerability and share Jesus just by sharing their life. There's somebody else this week that was like, uh, they were at their work. And my favorite conversation made about Anthem that I've ever had. Uh, and uh, they were at their work and, and uh, the conversation of church got brought up. And uh, so th- uh, they were asked, they were, they were part of here with Anthem. They were like, well, what church do you go to? And they said, oh, I go to this church called Anthem. They were like, well, what, what, what is... Uh, uh, what, 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 what's your church about? And they're like, well, we, uh, uh, you know, we, we just try to uh, love people and, and live, live as Jesus lives and love as, as Jesus loves. And they said, well, the person like had this like blue screen of death and was like, well, what do you, what, what do you mean? Well, like who, like, are, are you Catholic? Like, like what, what affiliation are you? Like who, who are you with? What denomination? So I can try to put you in a box and understand who you are and and the person was like, I, I don't know. I, the person said, our affiliation, um, uh, people? <laughs> like, our affiliation is people, and I loved it so much. I was like, yes, that's our affiliation. Yes, that's the answer. So they texted, and they were like, I don't know how to describe Anthem. And I was like, you just did. You just did. You described a place of, 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 of that our affiliation is people. And in that same vein, on that same day, I heard from another family who has a, 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 some kids in their lives, and uh, one of their daughter's friends is in the middle right now of being rejected by her church and her family. And she's broken. Her, this mom who has known the, you know, her daughter's friend for so long is heartbroken by it and goes, I just want them to, to, be, able to, to, be, able to be able to come and heal and be, and be accepted and loved. And and be in this zone of healing. I'm like, I know, that's what Anthem is all about. In the beginning of the week, somebody's sharing how they're a follower of Jesus, but in humility and vulnerability, man, this is where I blow it all the time. And then uh, somebody else going, well, what church are you a part of? And we're like, I don't know, a, a people church? A Jesus church? And in that same vein, somebody going, hey, we have somebody hurting here. We've got to, they've been rejected by the people that, 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 that talk about Jesus. How do we, how, how can we help and love and, and show them the acceptance of God. Like, that is nothing but a movement that is not thought about self-preservation, and it's a movement about here and now. It's not about 75 years from now when I die, so I get fire insurance, so I'm going to pray my prayer, and I'm going to make sure I show up enough so that God will check off enough, enough stuff on my list so that I'll get in. No, it's about here and now. So like an anthem, we don't worry about like, well, we can't gather physically right now, like together here. What does that look like? Well, here's what God's going to do. He's just going to explode little hubs of anthem. He's going to shoot them off like, like Spider-Man shooting spider webs out. And there's going to be little hubs of zones of healing there in Arizona and two in California and there in Salem and there in Vancouver and here in Beaverton. And you know what? Even across the ocean in Thessaloniki, that's what we're going to do. That's not what I did. That's not what any of us had planned. That's what God did. And so that's in the middle of the unknown for us as a church. How do we do that? How do we live together? How do we have part of this together? It's about here and now, not about the self-preservation of how Anthem is going to get to look the way that we want to keep it looking. It's about what Jesus wants it to look like. So the question for us is, where are you a zone of healing, and where are you a zone of acceptance? Where are you a zone of love? And really, this needs to be answered by uh, probably some other people in your life. You should take some time this week to pray and ask, God, where am I a zone of healing? Where am I, a zone of love and acceptance? And then I think you should ask somebody who's safe and loving in your life who can speak into and ask them, hey, where do you see me where I'm at, where I've been this zone of love and acceptance or, or healing? And the second thing I think we need to look at is going about how can I be a zone of healing here and now? That immediately follows, like, okay, um, if I've been a zone, a place of healing here, great. I, how can I use that? and expand on that? Or, or where am I not been a zone of healing? Because sometimes we're a zone of acceptance over here, right? Because like, oh, I deal with this stuff. Like sometimes we, this, oh man, we do this with sin all the time, stuff that we blow it in. Uh, ex-gambler, ex-gambling addict. If you have any questions about it, you can just ask me. I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, but 
I have all sorts, right? So, but it's all my stuff, right? So somebody comes up and has a question or, man, I'm struggling with gambling. Ah, oh, come on, man. I know, I, I know what that feels like. Let's talk about it. Ah, uh, but, but then there's something that I don't struggle with. Pastors and Christians love to do this. Oh, I don't struggle with this at all? Boom, judgment and, 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 and guilt and shame because I don't struggle with that. So often we need to not just ask, hey, where am I a zone of healing? Because I need to be reminded of areas that, I, that Jesus is relevant in my life and I see it and others see it in my life. But also, okay, what's the opposite? Where do I blow it at? Is it online with my social media and the way that I conduct myself? Is it in my response to people who have differing political beliefs than me? Is it with people who drink Dutch, uh, Dutch Brothers instead of Black Rock? I mean, where is my zone of healing and acceptance need to be? So how can we? First thing we do is always what? We pray. Jesus says you cannot do this mission unless you are empowered by God. You cannot live as you are purposed and designed, live as Jesus lives or love as Jesus loves without the Holy Spirit empowering you to do so. Because I can't even like fully uh, uh, 100% all the time love my family the way I want, I want to love them. I need Jesus to be able to help me to love my family when they upset me, when they frustrate me, when they blow it, let alone the people I don't like. So first thing I need to do is pray and I need to ask Jesus uh, help me, empower me to do this. Second thing I need to do is we need to, you need to step into your church. The people of Antioch, when they got scattered into Antioch, they scattered and then gathered together. So what does it look like for you as a part of Anthem? Where are you at in your relationship and walk with Jesus as a part of Anthem? Where can you step in at? Oh, we don't meet physically here anymore, so we don't need somebody to throw up chairs. That's right. But where else can we use your skills? Where else can God use your talents? Where else can you, can you expand uh, your dedication to, to Jesus? Where can you expand your growth? Is this a time where I need to step into a DNA community? You know what? I'm going to step into the prayer team. I, I don't know how to pray. Uh, hope will teach you. It, it's real easy. Uh, may, maybe I need to step into this area, or, or maybe I need to start a DNA community and ask the people to come be a part of it. You know what? Here's also what you should do. What time do you gather for church each week? It's real easy when we're like, church is this week at this time because that's when Paul and the tech team and the band is all here. That's when we're all going to gather. But now we can gather whenever we want. So Sunday at 10, 15, maybe that doesn't work for you. That's fine. But when do you gather for church? Every Tuesday at 6 o'clock, that's when I gather. Every Wednesday at 6 o'clock before our DNA community, that's when we gather. Every Saturday night at 5.30, that's when we gather. Every Sunday at 6, that's when we gather. They went, set a time to go for these next four weeks. This is when we're gonna gather. And it goes in your schedule. And this is, the, maybe that's where you step in, uh, the, that first step for you. And the third thing and the last thing is that you gotta be patient. Be patient. Because uh, if I want others to be patient with me and my growth, then I need to be patient in others and their growth. I need Jesus to, to show me uh, where others are growing and to see that and to hold on to that rather than pick apart where they are blowing it, at least in my opinion. And you have patience for God to do what he wants to do and to allow him to do it. But this, uh, is, as a pastor man, when I see what God is doing right now in their church, you know, it's really hard for me not to go like 100 miles an hour. Hey, God, I'm seeing so many things. There's so many cool things. We, we could go, we do, 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 do. And like, nope, you know what God is telling me to do right now? Be patient. Not pull back. Be patient. Keep doing what you're doing. So, let's pray. <sighs> Holy Jesus, we thank you that you have created Anthem to be a zone of healing and acceptance. And God, we ask that you continue to form us into be being a, a greater zone of healing and acceptance. Jesus, as, as, um, our, as our tribe is made up of sinners and saints, may we uh, come to you and come to one another in humility and vulnerability. And would you show us where we are zones of healing and build us up? And then would you show us where you want to shape us and move us for God? Arise, O oh Lord. We are helpless in this. We need you to empower us to do so. Amen. We fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet.
Jesus, you are holy, and you make us holy. So may we leave here knowing, not in guilt and shame, but how beautiful we are uh, because of who you are, God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we'd love for you to hang out with us right now on Zoom for a few minutes just to check in and say hi. So click on that link right there. And before you do, would you extend your hands? Um, Would you receive this blessing this week? Would you be blessed this week in big ways or small way? to be a zone of healing and acceptance. Amen. Amen. Thank you, tribe. I see a T-Rex on. Who put you up to that? Which one? Was it Ray? Oh, you. See. Hate, 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 hate. This is a Dave Chappelle, but I need iced tea up in here. Hate, 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 hate. Thank you. Uh. Oh, I know. My dead monster's all over there. Fallen soldiers. Dude, you know, I was thinking, I know we can't, but I had, I, right as I was about to pray, I was like, man, I bet we could like green screen and like fly. Dude, can we do a flying thing on here? Like right as I was about to pray, R- R- Rick is singing, right? We're finishing. I'm like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Here's my ADD mind. And I'm loving this. Dude, I bet we can make me look like Superman. I bet we could do that. All right, everybody. Like, that's how this, that's how this goes. Love you guys. Thank you all.